This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 357 of the Dressage Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network, brought to you by the United States Para Equestrian Association. This episode is brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products, Clarion Hotel Lexington, and Total Saddle Fit. This is Lindsay McCall from Jupiter, Florida. And this is Regina Christo from Sand Lake, New York. And you're listening to the Dressage Radio Show. And we have our producer, Glenn, here with us tonight. Hi, guys. Welcome back. It's been a while. It has. It's been a long time for us. It's so good to have you guys back, and we can get caught up a little bit on para-equestrian tonight. And, of course, with Rio coming up, it's important that we do that. We have some uh, our selection trials actually just coming up here in June, so we're all getting pumped for that. Now, those will be in New Jersey again? No, they're actually going to be in Michigan. Okay. At the Waterloo Hunt Club, um, June 3rd through the 5th. That is coming up. That, a, a month away, and we'll be there. Yeah. Two, actually, two <laughs> months away. But but who's counting? So now, <laughs> th- now, do we have a short list and a long list at this point? Um, not necessarily. We have okay. our riders that have earned their certificate of capability um, okay. through this year, and we have our high performance list of riders that are all aiming to hopefully qualify and are hopefully make the team. Um, but you know, there is a, there is a small, short number of people that can actually be on the team. So it'll be really down to the wire um, on that last day, in my opinion. So now the teams now this year, are we talking four people? Yes. Okay. I, I, I thought it was four. Um, and do they do it like dressage where there's, uh, you know, as far as team scoring in the Olympics for para, is it, is it, uh, there's a drop score of the four? Is that how it works? Yes, there okay. is. All so right. you take your top, your top three and, and you, you, or you take your top scores and you drop your, drop your lowest score. Got Correct. It. Okay. And then they can beat as individuals as well. Just like, uh, yes. okay. So it's pretty much the yeah. same as dressage is on, on the able-bodied side. Yeah. Okay. It is. Cool. Very good. And, of course, you know, there's been a lot. We've had some conversation on the shows about uh, how, how everybody wants to change all of that. And, uh, you know, especially for the equestrian side for the Olympics and, and maybe change the rules and event, eventing. He's even talking about changing the name. So, I, you know, oh. <laughs> and it's... Uh, it's been an interesting conversation. We'll see how all that plays out. But for Rio, uh, you know, uh, do we n- have any word on whether the venue is actually going to be ready? Have you heard any inside scoop? I, and- I've heard from, from uh, Carlos Lopez, uh, Lopez, who's one of our uh, judges. Uh, he said it's great. Everything's safe. Everything's wonderful. And, and there's a you know, nice road to get there. So I've, I've heard everything's great for us um, at that time period. So we will see what happens. Good. Terrific. Now, Lindsay, since we talked to you last, you you had actually doing this show during the, the run of you being on our show, which has been a long time now. Um, yeah. You, you, you got pregnant, had a baby, and now you're pregnant again. Yeah. You know, I coordinate my pregnancies with the World Equestrian Games and, and the pa- uh, Paralympics, of course. <laughs> <laughs> which you- are... Um, you actually Our did chef- have the last baby during the World Equestrian Games, right? I did. I had it on Team Test Day, and um, our uh, chef to keep told me this last time, you know you can't get pregnant during a World Games again, right? Well, of course I did. So my children are only two years apart. So, But, um, yes, yeah, be, I am due September 14th with a baby boy this time, and uh, we're very excited about it. Well, congratulations. You're just, yes, you congratulations. Aren't, you aren't going to be going to Rio. <laughs> I am not going to Rio. <laughs> no. Well, that's te- that's terrific. Congratulations. So we, basically, since you've been on the show, we'll, we'll be going through the second baby now. I will, yes. Yeah. Yep. That's how long it's been. <laughs> it's amazing. All the way from <laughs> London to now. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. And it is cool. that. Uh, and then we you'll have another one in two years in, during Canada. Oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Lindsay, are you planning this for me? <laughs> It seems to be a habit, you know. It seems to be a trend. Well, we have you better some... ask her husband, Glenn. <laughs> 
We have some good guests coming up today that I'm excited for the audience to get to know a little bit. And why don't, after this word from Kentucky Performance Products, why don't you tell us who we're going to hear from first? And I think it's Gigi. Tell us a little bit about Gigi. Sure. Um, she's been around for a long time. She's a, she was a top eventing rider, and um, she actually got injured while eventing. And um, she came back through the ranks and through Paradisage, and she has been doing quite well over the last few years. And uh, she is traveled internationally um, this recently and, and did well over in Europe. And she is now qualified for the selection trials, and she has, she's sitting in second as far as her scores right now as one of the top riders. So I'm looking forward to seeing what happens, and I know she's really excited about it, and she's such an amazing advocate for paradressage in general and such a mentor to so many people. And uh, I think everyone will enjoy her interview because she has a lot to tell us and a lot to advocate for. So coming up is Gigi McIntosh. She had waited all her life for this moment, dreaming about it since she was 10 years old. The trailer ramp touched the ground. He whinnied as she backed him out, swinging his head around to get a good look at his new home. His coat gleamed in the sun. Her love had arrived. She was breathless. He was beautiful. She could hardly wait to tack him up and start off on what she was sure would be the best times of her life. This love story is brought to you by Contribute, providing essential omega-3 fatty acids that help maintain low inflammation levels throughout your horse's body. The horse that matters to you matters to Kentucky Performance Products. Call 859-873-2974 or visit kppusa.com to order today. Hi, Gigi. Thanks for coming to the show tonight with Regina and I. Thanks for inviting me. I'm delighted to talk about our time in Wellington this January. So um, how has everything been going with you since since Wellington and uh, up to now? What have you been doing? Uh, It's very exciting. In preparation for the selection trials, we had a wonderful clinic um, with Clive Milkins, who was the... uh, the coach for Sophie Christensen, who won multiple gold medals as a 1A for Great Britain. Um, Clive is now freelancing, but he's based in Maine with Carlisle Academy, and Sarah Armentrout and Carlisle Academy made it possible for him to come to Ocala to do a two-day clinic um, with several of us in the middle of March. We had a great time with Clive. He's a very entertaining clinician as well as being very informative. Clive is so much fun, and I hope that he'll be able to do more um, teaching in the United States. He'll be back in April and May, and I hope more people will utilize him. He's a great, he's a fountain of information. Speaking of competitions, tell us a little bit about uh, the shows in Wellington this past season. I know there was uh, quite a few para riders and you know, there were some big competitions, and uh, what was your overall impression, and uh, how did you do? Well, the most exciting thing about those competitions was that we had great sponsors. Um, Regina uh, organized a donation of beautiful blankets for the um, team competition winners from Dover Saddlery. Mark Bellissimo of Equestrian Sports Productions, who is the owner of the Global Dressage Facility, donated $10,000 to both the Americans and the Canadians. Um, Wow. Incredible. The the most exciting thing was that there was $10,000 in prize money donated by Becky Reno of Mission Control and Rowan O'Reilly and Linda Beats from Mainstream, which is the which is run by the Professional Association of Therapeutic Horsemanship in New Jersey. And Adequan and Neutrina are regular sponsors at the Adequan Global Dressage Festival. So we all got prizes from them as well. Uh, the most exciting part was showing in the stadium at the Adequan Global Dressage Festival. 
it's a beautifully decorated um, area at the showgrounds, surrounded by banners and brightly colored decorations, which are which provide an atmosphere much more like the European shows. It really was, and honestly, I think I saw for the. 10 years that I've been with Terra Dressage, some of our best riders and best horses out there. And none of that weather phased them whatsoever. And all of the U.S. riders did really well. And uh, you yourself did well, too, huh? Um, it, it, it was a, a great competition for me. Um, I've, Missy and I have been working really hard. You know, we sort of had a tough time at the Nationals. Rio wasn't her best after that trip to Texas. But she really redeemed herself uh, in the first show um, at Attaquan. Um, we ended up reserve champion behind Becca. Um, and in the second show, we placed second to Roxanne um, throughout the competition and actually won the freestyle. But you guys, the most exciting part for me was to be part of the team that actually qualified the U.S. team for Rio. Up until wow. the competition, everything was, we were all sort of holding our breath, hoping that we would end up as one of the top seven teams and get a qualifying spot. So it tell was, our listeners what, why that was so important to get a seven spot. How did that even come about? Can you maybe explain that a little bit? The teams that place in the top three spots at the World Equestrian Games automatically get a place at the Olympics. But as you can imagine, there are so many teams that the, there are more teams than there are qualifying spots. So those three teams automatically get a spot. Um, the teams that place in the top seven places in the international rankings will also get a spot. Um, the, the tricky part is that if you're not one of those top seven teams, they take one team from each continent so that there would be had we not been in the top seven, it would have been a tough competition between the United States and Canada to place um, which which team would beat out the other for that spot. But because we were within, we actually ended up in fourth place, not only was our team accepted into the Olympics, but the Canadians were also accepted as the team from the North American continent. It was it, it worked out well for everybody. Yes, I um I can remember being down there the second weekend of competition and everybody was talking about it, it's almost so complicated if you're really not in the guts of it and you don't talk to people who really know. It can be very confusing and it was a wonderful feat that all you guys pulled together and, and got that done and got us down there and it's gonna be an exciting time um for you all of you individually and as a team and uh for the country. So we're all very proud of you guys. So what's up next? What is the, the actual next step for you and for um, the para riders going forward toward Rio? Um, uh, well, yeah. um, everything comes down to the selection trials, which will be held the first weekend in June um, at Dressage at Waterloo in Grass Lake, Michigan. Mm-hmm. Um, Competition will be held at the Waterloo Hunt Club. The, um, the national championships will also be held at the same time, and there will actually be um, two divisions in the national championships, a high-performance division, you know, for those who, um, which will also be the selection trials for the um, 2016 Paralympic Games in Rio, and mm-hmm. the national division for those who are just sort of breaking into this scene. Mm -hmm. Um, The scores from that selection trials will be averaged with with the international scores that we have all gained over January and over the past year um, Mm -hmm. to determine the, the rankings um, for the team that will ultimately be ch- 
cho- ultimately be chosen to go to Rio. Uh, it's very stressful, <laughs> as you can imagine. It is very, very exciting, and I'm looking forward to hearing about everything, because I unfortunately won't be able to be in Rio this year, but I know we're all looking forward to it, and looking forward to the June National Championships and Selection Trials. We wish you the best of luck. You've had a fantastic year. We've all really enjoyed watching you and your beautiful horse, and you guys have just really done a terrific job. So we hope to see you in Michigan, and thank you so much again for joining us tonight um, and letting us know what's going on. Hi, Fiona Crawford here, and I'm an official Horse Radio Network auditor. I'm a horse photographer based in the UK, and when I'm editing my images, I listen to the vast selection of great programs provided by the Horse Radio Network. Both informative and really entertaining, I think it's worth a few dollars or pounds of anyone's money. Just go to horseradionetwork.com and click on the banner, and for as little as a dollar a month, you too can become an official Horse Radio Network auditor. Next on our show is newcomer para-equestrian, Katie Jackson from Austin, Texas. Hi, Katie. It's Regina in New York. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, I know you're a new para-rider, and we're thrilled to be able to talk to you and uh, have you share your story. Oh, yes. Thank you. I'm really excited to get to be a part of this, and and this whole experience so far has been uh, really exciting. So thank you for having me. So tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. I know you're um, a recent uh, para convert and you've been out doing some things and doing some training and tell us a little bit about your background. I am. So I grew up in a small town in Southern Oregon and uh, got the horse bug pretty early. So um grew up kind of pleasure riding and a little bit of dressage and then a whole lot more dressage as I got into high school and um, have kind of kept horses in my life in some way, shape, or form. Uh, and again, after settling in, in Texas here, was riding as an adult amateur. And then life changed pretty significantly for me last summer uh, with a diagnosis of cancer in my knee. And so I was looking at uh, amputation of my right leg above the knee as really my only only way of getting the cancer out of there and having as as much of a chance as we could of, of making sure that it doesn't come back. So um, life as I knew it and, and from a writing standpoint and just in general kind of kind of changed pretty abruptly. But uh, with that, um, you know, even from day one and as we were looking into um, is this cancer, is it not, kind of big hugs with my husband and it's still kind of hard to talk about, but you know, I said, well, if I'm if if this happens, we're gonna um, start riding as a para as soon as I can, and, and look into the para equestrian stuff. And it doesn't mean that I've got to stop riding in any any way. So that um, as soon as I can, I was back out at the barn after my surgery, and then once I was cleared by the doctor, uh, started started riding again through a therapeutic program here in Austin. Um, and and also started looking into what para, paraquestrian dressage was all about. And it just so happened that the U.S. Nationals were in Katy last fall. Um, mm-hmm. So we, we drove out there and um, got a really warm welcome and, and got to see some amazing riders who were a super, super inspiration and so kept me going. And then um, got to go to uh, Wellington in January and... Uh, meet more riders and, and meet Kai and meet um, a, some really just amazing people through all of Yousef and, and the United States Paraquestrian Organization and um, got me really motivated and actually invited me to come back and get classified. So um, I have gotten classified uh, as of, I guess that was the end of January and then got to meet uh, with Kai up in Dallas in February. Uh, and it's it's really been like a amazing, the most amazing runaway train you've ever been on. That it's all happened so fast. Wow! But, uh, I got to put my seatbelt on listening to it. I know, I know. Oh. it's kind of crazy even to to try and talk about it. I'm like, yeah, it's, wow, it it really has happened fast. And and he had um, just brought in a horse that he mentioned to me. That he thought could be a, a good fit to be a para dressage horse and. 
um, clicked with him pretty pretty instantaneously, and, and he's um, actually mine now. I made the jump and, and purchased him. His name is Wembley, and uh, we went to our first horse show, and the main goal there was to, you know, get some experience back. It had been five years since I'd been in the show ring, so get some show nerves uh, behind me, and, and we were fortunate enough to qualify and are now looking to um, go up to Michigan and, and ride at the Nationals. So it's it's pretty unbelievable um, to be to be sitting here, you know, less than eight months after my surgery and and in this position. So I'm I feel hmm. really really lucky and kind of over the moon with excitement that something that was such a such a you know tough thing to go through has had some pretty awesome silver linings too. So. Now, Katie, what was it like emotionally and physically to go from able-bodied dressage rider to paradressage rider? It was it was a pretty big change, and and truthfully, I had quite a bit of anxiety about getting back on, and and um, you know, even just how to get on the horse because I do have a, a prosthesis that I wear, and um, you know, questions about would I wear the prosthesis? Would I take it off? You know, if I took it off before I got on, how do we do that to, to, of course, make sure that it's safe? And then also, you know, what is your balance like? Your brain kind of knows what it's like to sit on a horse with, with both legs and with, you know, everything there. But, you know, what what would the balance be like? So I was pretty nervous. And, and so I decided to take it slow and, and actually approach the therapeutic riding center Um that was really helpful. And and we went out there and just met the horses one day and, um, you know, kind of talked it over on, on how I would do it. And they of course have the, um, ramp to to go up to make mounting a little bit easier. So they walked me, Mm -hmm. walked me through it and made it, um, made it as smooth and and safe as possible. And the horses there were great for, for doing that with, And, and it's definitely an adjustment. I mean, your brain, um, wants to overcompensate, or, mm-hmm. or the limb not being there. And so, um, you know, it, it's definitely a mental challenge to, to convince your mind that sitting straight doesn't mean that you're going to fall off to the left because you don't have that mm-hmm. weight there. And, um, and even though I still have a, a decent amount of my limb, it, it really doesn't work like a leg anymore. You know, it, it doesn't mm-hmm. grip, it doesn't do the things that a normal quad and thigh would do. So it's, um, there were some hurdles, and we're still, well, it's a work in progress, that's for sure. Yes, it is, um, yes. Um, when you had your um, your evaluation done, and uh, what grade, what did they evaluate, which grade? So, I'm a grade four. Uh, so, okay, which for yeah. um, listeners who might not know exactly, grade fours are, uh, are riders with highest ability, so mm-hmm. um, obviously they are impressed with your riding and consider um, putting you in that grade up oh, do were you um have any do you have any modifiers or anything that that you use um with your riding with your stirrups or anything else i do so the the main thing that i found that helps me just with a little bit more security is um i'm able to use a velcro strap that goes across my thigh uh mm-hmm. and that just gives me a little something if the horse were to startle or i lose my balance to kind of bring the limb up um, to give just just a little something uh, there for for reassurance, I call it my seat belt. Um, even though it really doesn't it doesn't keep me in. I mean, if I if I were to come off, my leg would you know my I don't ride with my prosthesis on, and so um, with that you know my leg would slip out, and it really doesn't help me stay in the saddle. But it you know in an emergency situation, it, it you know a couple of times I've used it to kind of catch myself um, if the horse kind of startles or something like that. Um, Right. And then I, I, I'm able to use the soft um, release across the pommel uh, or the strap there, too, mm-hmm. um, as well. And then written in there, um, just a few other things. Like, I don't have to have stirrup on that side. Um, obviously, if I'm not, I don't have um, my prosthesis on. So, um, not, a, not a ton. I think also I'm able to post if I, if I can. Right now, posting's not super comfortable, but I can if I need it to. And you've been riding with Kai um, now, who's our chef to keep for the United States team. Tell me about working with him. I have. It's been awesome. Uh, Kai is just a really 
um, amazing person. I mean, he has a, a big heart, and he, you know, I think has a special place in that heart for uh, paraquestrians and, and just uh, going up there. And, and I really didn't know what to expect. I'd gotten to watch him coach some of the riders at the shows and, and gotten to talk with him briefly, but going up there in February was, um, I was nervous. I, I'd really only been riding for about four to six weeks um, doing any anything resembling dressage so muscles weren't weren't super in shape and that so um was pretty nervous and and he has some amazing horses i mean the, the caliber of horses are unlike anything that i've i've ridden before and and so um it's it's been fun it's been kind of a amazing amazing ride so to speak to, to get to work with him and then um, you know, in, in a short amount of time, I felt like he has really improved my, my writing and my understanding and, and kind of holding me to an even higher level um, than I ever rode at as an able-bodied rider, too. So he's, he's been amazing. I'm really feel lucky to um, live as close as I do. It's a, it's a decent drive to get up there, but um feel lucky that I can, you know, get up there. I'm going up weekly right now, so... Oh, great. It's been fun. So, yeah. uh, so you're going to nationals. Have you qualified to ride at nationals or are you going as a spectator? Um, I've qualified and I actually, uh, just That's with the exciting. timing of things. Yeah. I had, we had planned for me to ride, uh, Kai's wife, Rachel, her horse, uh, Giovanni in the horse show and to look at qualifying with Giovanni. And then with, um, me deciding to purchase Wembley, I took both of them to the show, and so I was actually able to qualify for both of them um, for nice. nationals. So, yeah, it was well done. Um, thank you. And you're going. Thank you. And we you're are. going. Yeah. Oh, yeah, how exciting! Haven't bought, haven't bought my ticket yet, but we're going. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I've, I've got it on the calendar. Yep. So really, really excited about that. That was. Definitely not That's on the wonderful. radar when, when it rolled in 2016. So, yeah, thank you so much. Well, congratulations. It's a huge feat, and we're thrilled that we have another talented para rider that has joined the team because our, our para is like a family team, and we have riders from all over the country, and it, mm-hmm. it's great. You sound like you've got like a, a great para career ahead of you, and like you say, silver lining mm-hmm. sometimes a year ago, you probably could never have dreamed this. Yeah, I had no idea that I'd be doing any of this a year ago, and and yeah, just to just to say thank you too. It really is a, a family, and and from going to Katie last year, um, and everything moving forward, I've just been really blown away at how open and welcoming and friendly and encouraging everybody that I've met has been. I mean, it's, it's such a really neat community. I feel lucky to be a part of it. So. It, yes, it is for sure. Excited for what the future holds. <laughs> yes. Well, we all look forward to um, meeting you. I'm sorry I didn't get to meet you. I, I was in Florida that weekend, but I, for somehow we didn't get to meet up. Oh, um, sure. But we look yeah. forward. Yeah. So, but thank you so much for taking time tonight to speak with us. And um, Lindsay and I were very grateful that you could join us tonight. And we hope to see you at National. Well, now it's time for our training tip brought to you by Total Saddle Fit. <laughs> This week's dressage training tip is brought to you by Total Saddle Fit, home of the shoulder relief girth at totalsaddlefit.com. Well, Regina, you're going to do the training tip tonight, and I happen to know that you're a judge, and uh, you're an L judge with dis. What was that word again? Distinction. Distinction. So, what is, what's a judge with distinction? Um, Well, I went through the USDF um, L program, which is a training uh, for judges. It's the first step in the judging ladder. Um, And if you go through the the courses and all the practical and all the testing, um, you graduate either as an L graduate um, or you graduate as an L with distinction. And the difference is if you have distinction, you've scored higher in all your testing and you're able to apply to USEF to move up at the judging ranks. So, so if you if you um, barely passed your test, are you an L like with uh, crappy grades? 
Uh, um, well, you're kind of, it's kind of a pass or fail, even though you do okay. get a grade, right, if you get right. over a certain score, but then if you score even higher, um, you're selected to have distinction, and that enables you to be able to move up. Lindsay, um, what L- she's saying, she's a smarty pants. That's what she's saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take that. <laughs> you should. That's a compliment. <laughs> yes, I love it. It's, it works very hard, and... Um, L uh, judges are able to officiate at schooling shows up through second level. And we know there's tons of schooling shows, and it's, yeah, it's a real joy to get out there well, and help people. There's more of those than there are Grand Prix shows. So, um, yes, there is. <laughs> so now, what is, if there's one thing that you look at when you're judging, and you go, it drives you crazy every time, what would it be? If you were to pick out one, I know there's probably more than one, but if you were to pick out one thing, what would it be? Um, I would say the halts. Um, a lot of easy points are lost. Um, if people uh, read the rules, you are supposed to be halted at the beginning, at the end of your test. Um, if there are uh, that directive in your test, which most of our, our tests are, um, and hold your halt for three seconds um, and then salute and go on. Um, people don't understand it gives you your horse an opportunity to settle, to stand quiet and stand still. Three seconds is a long time in I would say nine out of ten people halt as fast as they can, and they salute as fast as they can, and then they go zooming off because they just don't want to stand there. So it's really important, and I write it on probably eight out of ten tests. Hold your halt for three seconds. It's the rule, and it enables your horse to balance and be more comfortable. So I am a big advocate of it, and I try to do it myself when I ride, and it's helped me a lot, and I hope it helps other people with my advice. So it's it's the uh, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, not the 1, 2, 3. Absolutely. Okay. Some people hard, I mean, hardly even stop at all. So, you know, it, it really will help you, even though, you know, people feel rushed. You should relax and count to three and salute and then go on your way. And you know what? So that's three, my tip. three seconds seems like a long time when you're sitting there. Uh, it seems like Absolutely. you've been sitting there for about a minute, right? And it's only been three Absolutely. seconds. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Because and I, I am also, yes, I'm a competitor too, and I show a lot. And I, I nail that halt now. I got the advice from somebody before, and I use it in my judging, and I use it in my riding, and it has helped. I have had my scores go up significantly. Um, in my halt scores since I started doing it. So I hope everybody takes a chance to try that. Well, you know, when you're warming up and everybody gets nervous, how do you handle nerves when you're warming up? A lot of people sing a song, you know, they try and uh, focus on something else. They think about happy things. What, what do you do in your warm up to, to relax? Um, one of the important things I'm an adult amateur and although I am a judge, um, I am an adult amateur, which is kind of, um, doesn't happen very often. So my riding and my competing are for pleasure and fun and experience. So I'm a little different than being a professional where I like to go out and have a good time. And if I do good, I do good. I like to get in the warm up ring, do what I do at home with my horse. It's not a place to train your horse. It's not a place to fix mistakes. It's a place to go in and warm up and do, you work with what you have. And that's what I try to do. I try to work with what I have for the day. And you know, horses, some days they can be perfectly fine and other days they're curious about everything. So just go in, work with what you have, do the best you can, and have fun, because if you're not having fun, you're doing something wrong. I know one of our favorite quotes on the morning show is, ride the horse you have that day. Absolutely. I yeah. agree 100%. Yeah, we forget that sometimes. Like, you know, I, I drive, and this morning I was driving, and boy, <laughs> my horse was not into driving today. So it was like, okay, well, we're just going to walk. We're not going to train anything. You know, it, yep. he had his shots mm-hmm. yesterday, and I don't think he was feeling too good today. And it was like, okay, well, we're gonna, I'm going to drive the horse I have today. Uh, yep, okay. I totally agree. Yeah. And tomorrow we'll deal with something else. But, yep. <laughs> and Absolutely. that's hard, though, because you have in your mind set what you want to accomplish, right? What you thought Absolutely. you wanted to do that day, mm-hmm. and you just have to back off and go, okay, well, that's not what my horse wanted to do today. Right. Yeah. This tip was brought to you by Total Saddle Fit, the shoulder relief girth that Reese and Philip both love. And here's why. The saddle fit solution you have been waiting for is finally here. TotalSaddleFit.com is proud to introduce the shoulder relief girth. This strategically shaped girth actually moves the girth line of your saddle back over one inch, thereby freeing your horse's shoulders from the saddle. 
Traditional girths pull saddles up against a horse's shoulders and often over the top of the shoulders. The shoulder relief girths' recessed ends allow for the billets to buckle into the girth farther back to give your horse unparalleled freedom of motion. We are so certain that your saddle will fit better and your horse will be more comfortable that for a limited time we are offering a 30-day, 110% money-back guarantee. If you are not totally satisfied with your shoulder relief girth, send it back for a full refund plus 10% of the purchase price. Don't wait. Order now for the best saddle fit solution available. At TotalSaddleFit.com. Visit TotalSaddleFit.com. Well, that's great. Thank you so much for that. And uh, now, where can people find out more information about the Paras? Uh, if they want to help support Para, what can they do? Lindsay? Sure. Um, every, everyone can find more information um, at USDEA.org. Um, they can also look at the United States Equestrian Federation website at U- USEF. Dot org and um, or you can always contact any of us and uh, a good email is hope h o p e at u s p e a dot org and she can answer any of your questions or send send her questions on to one of us. Very good and Regina, you have a website or people can um, find I you do on not Facebook? find you on Facebook. Yeah, I am on Facebook and if you my name um, just Google my name and you'll find my email and my contact information and. I'd be happy to talk to anybody, especially about Tara, one of my favorite things. Very good. We'll put that in our show notes as well on on the Dressage Radio Show website, dressageradio.com. Don't forget, you can find all of the shows on the Horse Radio Network on our app. It's the simplest way to listen to our shows. It's free and it's easy. Just go to uh, Horse Radio Network in the App Store, iOS or Android, and download it there. About 25,000 people have downloaded the app now, so a lot of people are listening that way. And you can uh, tune in to the Dressage Radio Show at dressageradio.com. Reese and Philip will be back next week. Thank you guys so much for joining us again. We really appreciate the para. And we're going to be hopefully doing a couple more shows before Rio. Wonderful. All right. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Glenn. We appreciate it. 